So to kick this hair cut off, I'll go in with a one and a half guard. And it's basically a one and a half blade. I'm using them on my Andes ZR2s. And I'm going with the grain. And I'm getting all of the hair down to that one desired length. So when cutting a client like this, you got to understand and know. You got to understand and look at hair space and then gap it off back. I already know that this is not the most uh, best client when it comes down to waving due to the patchiness of the hair but if you keep it consistent i promise you will get this hair down to its desired length and you will be able to finish strong on this type of hair texture and on this canvas and as you guys could just see like it's just certain parts of his hair that's just more dense than the other not strong crazy calyx but it's just certain parts that are more dense than the other you take your time i promise you you will execute getting this hair down to its desired length so if you're able to stick through this 15 minute video today i promise we finna dish this gas as usual so to kick this video off let's go ahead and we go into the sideburn area using our gold fx's and we creating a round circular guideline because we want the taper to look kind of bursted and rounded due to us having so much tape area to work with I'll do the same initial hit in the back going up at least a half of an inch and I'm going straight across setting myself up for the taper remember keep everything consistent and don't dig in and just let the trimmers do the work and I promise you get these guidelines as clean as possible Then I go in completely open with my Andis Masters and I'm going up at least a half of an inch. I want to keep the taper kind of low due to the indents in the head and due to what the last big wave is. So I'm just taking in counter the fact of what things will hop in my way throughout this haircut and things and obstacles that I'm going to run into. So I'm going in at least halfway with my 116th guard and I'm just basically flicking this line out as you guys can see without too much effort it's kind of easier to feather out lines when you're going straight up opposed to just digging in the hair and that's one thing that i like about this angle this angle isn't too crazy but you can see my hand you can see my rhythm of my fade i'm going straight up i'm not digging into the hair or anything like that that's what my guards are for that's what the black guards are for if you are able to get your hands on the original master guards that they dig in that original hair. You can lift the hair, and you can just manipulate it to do whatever you want. So I go in with a one fourth guard right here, just to debulk this area. And the one fourth is equivalent to my two, but I'm using that just so I could debulk this area and soften it up more, just so I could get more of a feather effect. And I go in with my one eighth guard, and then I'm just moving and adjusting my lever up and down anytime necessary, just so I could get this feathery effect before I put my one sixteenth back on and clean it all the way up. And as you guys can see, we got this taper coming together slowly but surely. Comb one, fade one. Then I go completely closed with my Andis Fade Masters blade on my wall 1919. Shout out to my brother Filthy Blends on Instagram. It is not spelled with a F. Those that are having a hard time, it's spelled with a PH. And Blends is spelled with a Z. Please. So look my boy filthy underscore blends up man i promise you you'll get that bracket and then turn your wall clippers into something completely different so put that end this blade on there the game gonna change i'm telling you so this is the 116 guard right here after i feathered it out going completely open with no guard i went in with my 116 then i break into my fade on this side due to it being very tight in the area of the fade i just debulk with a 1 8 just so i could clear this panel for myself and I can really see how high I can bring this taper or this side of the fade. And as you guys can see, when cutting the hair with a two or a one fourth or one eighth open against the grain will not debulk as much. It'll just open up your area so you can see. And then I went in completely open with no guard on. And as you guys can see, I'm starting to create my feather effect. You guys are starting to see exactly what the tape is going to look like. And that is the beauty of barbering. Trust in your process. And not only trusting your process, finding your theory. Finding what works for you. We have this big debate over if barber schools could teach or if YouTube is doing majority of the job. Honestly, to me, to even be an influence on being these schools due to the students going and searching on their own goes to show that we doing something correct. And I was just, man, I'm just very appreciative for everybody that come to my YouTube to learn 
off the things that I do. So what I did to the bottom part of the beer is what I did up top. It's just like common denominators. Whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. And in reference to the line and, or the taper, whatever you do to one, you essentially would do to the other side just to keep that symmetricalness, to keep everything even as possible and to keep everything distributed as even as possible. So I created my open line and then I go in halfway and then I'm gonna drop it fully closed here. And as you guys can see, just slowly but surely blowing the panel out. Then I go into 1 16th guard and that's about halfway. And I'm just basically flicking out in the circle area. You want the taper to stay consistent, no matter whatever the case is. You at least want the taper to stay consistent before you break into your line work, just so you can set yourself up. That's always what Barber and been about, setting yourself up for the next step. Whenever you make it that easy for yourself, this way you're going to be able to dish the effective work in 30 minutes or be able to even break your time efficiency down shorter than that. That's it. You got to learn your theory, and then once you learn your theory, you got to kick that theory in drive at all times. That's just very vital. Once you learn the theory, you just gotta apply it then. Like, don't change them steps and the game gonna reward you for that type of work that you put in. So understand and learn your theory and I promise you, you will start nailing it. So like I did at the top, I'm gonna drop to the bottom completely open. Then I'll close, slowly but surely close my clipper. Then I go into my 116th yard and debulk this area. And then I have a slight faded beard as well. Every step is vital. Everything that I do to one side, I will repeat and do to the other. That's just how the game is. So I go in with some spritz and I'm basically laying this hair down. I need to prep this hair for the next step. This is the biggest step of this haircut specifically. 90% of my clientele live off of their lineups. 90% of my clientele care about precision. Like I just have clientele that care about the crazy, clean, sharp looks. And that's exactly what we finna display today. So I'm just setting myself up for the next best thing. After I laid the spritz, I went in there and I'm freehanding with my Andes fade blade on top of my wall 1919s to get all of the hair truly down to that one desired length. We wanna make sure we ain't got no scraggly hairs. Then let's break into this line using the gold FX trimmers. And I'm just basically doing my vertical bars. And once I get to the tip of the ear, I will convert to the corner of my clipper and work that just so I can detail around the ear. Then I'll do the back of the beard line because any of my previous videos before, you guys always know I do the back of the neck line first and I do the back of the beard line. Everything is reference points. It's Everything is like small setup combos for the big haymaker. That's what, it's, that's what it's for. That's exactly what it's for. It's just like light bars in the middle and you know a two bar setups before the punch line. Like that's just how it is. Everything has a setup before you know a heavy punch and this is my setup I frame out I like to frame out I like to get myself reference points then I go in the front of the line and I'm just tapping and I'm going straight across I'm not applying too much pressure with my trimmers because I'm in tight areas the trimmers are sharp and um you could definitely hurt somebody with the trimmer so you kind of got to take your time and you want to glide and you want to hold your trimmers with as less you know tension as possible so you can make sure and ensure that the trimmers is doing 99 percent of the work it should only be one percent and that one percent should just be you holding the clipper and ensuring its security 99 should be all clipper work and then i plant it in the middle and work my way to the right and right here i'll do the vertical bar and as you guys can see i'm just tapping and going lightly letting everything come in naturally and then i'll do the bottom of this chicago c using the tip of my blade and slowly but surely working my way into this curve to officially achieve my circular shape or my curved shape then i go in with my boy sean cuts hair enhancement card shout out to my boy sean cuts hair every time i do a video this man sell out on these cards Sean actually sold out of the cards right now, but please still follow him on IG as Sean Cuts Hair. And please, like, y'all can put y'all notification bell on to see when this man posts so y'all can see when he re up on the cards. Everybody out there that's trying the card think is literally the dopest enhancement card, as you guys can see. I got my 90 degrees, I got my roundabout. It's impossible for me to spray outside of my realm. All of the color is getting where it needs to be, and I'm efficiently applying my my color at a 99% rate like I'm not having no trouble like everything is set up for me due to this card as I stated in my last video this card makes color enhancement premeditated 
everything you do is premeditated. Cause this card literally is the is the gatekeeper. Shout out to my boy Sean Cuz here again. Then I go in with my Barber Magic Pencil and I'm just basically finna conceal my line in the same way women will conceal like eyebrows. And this is just the best analogy for this situation because it's the, that's one of the closest things we get to see something like this with. They'll go in and they'll fill in their eyebrows which I filled in the lineup with the no drip and the beam team compressor. Then they'll go behind that and they'll conceal that with whatever concealer they want to use. And I'm using the Barber Magic Pencil as my concealer. Then they'll use a blending brush brush to blend their line out but I'll just use my trimmers to go in and tap this line out it's literally applying the same things in different industries it may be dressed and sauced up different but that's how it's supposed to be when you incorporate a different style with what you already have going on it shouldn't be a hundred percent that style anything that you incorporate with what you got on you should not be trying to be like somebody you should be trying to incorporate what you learned from them and assist it with what you already do. That's how you create your own gumbo. That's how you create your own flavor. That's how you become flavor. That's how like people would want to walk with you then. Because you never know what type of secrets you already hold or what techniques you already got. Assisted with somebody else's is gold mine. So I go in with my Tomb 45 triple cartridge super exposed blade. And this is really my only cartridge that I use. I'm only using super exposed. It's very dangerous. So I want you guys to understand and know if you're going to use the super exposed, please stretch the skin angle to raise at a 45 degree angle and bring everything back to the line. As you guys can see, I'm set up for greatness right now. And this this line is so rigid on the first time. So we go in with the whisk and we dust it off and we finna bring everything back to the line and get it real surgical, real precise and very, very, very clean. As you guys can see, we gotta stretch the skin. We gotta angle the razor. And we gotta bring everything back to the line. That's the objective. We want this lineup to be as crispy as possible. We want the client to be to be, to be a steal with the confidence. We want nothing but the Snapchat pictures, the Instagram pictures. We need every bit of that. That's the point. When your client walk out the shop, you should not have to be passing out business cards. The technique is so old. I'm not saying that groundwork is bad, but the technique is so old. Your client should be your walker advertisement. That is very big. Not only just does details matter, but this is what assists details. This is why my details matter. Because once I'm done with a haircut like this, my client advertising all day for me. It's not even something that I ask for. It's the confidence that's instilled in my client. They want to post on Snapchat. They want to post on Instagram. That's just one of the dopest things to me. We not only instill a confidence and making them happy about themselves they want to be in front of that camera and that's 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 what i'm aiming for i want my people to be in front of that camera i need them to take as many pictures as possible your clients is your walking advertising go crazy on these haircuts in the shop i don't understand what else i should say more in a situation like this y'all need to be going crazy y'all need to be focused locked in y'all know what time it is it's hashtag tbt it's 2019 this year the creators is bag season it's all of that it's up 2019 been crazy so it's only right that we don't that, that we gotta that we gotta go out in the year with just the same amount of fashion as we started the year off with and be ready to kick 2020 off with even something crazier. That's the objective. If the objective is breaking the barrier and growing every time we get closer to something else. That's just been so big and so vital to my barber process. That's how I've been able to grow. You just gotta stay down as, as long as possible until it's time to come up. And when it's time to come up, you gotta show them. Like that, that, that's just the difference. Like I walk with that confidence and I talk with that confidence because I've been the worst person in my shop. I tried to get help. I tried to learn this game. Nobody could teach me this game. That's what built this animal. People turning their back on me in the, in, the, in the funniest times, different barber teams. And I won't throw no names out there, but I'll keep it a buck with you. Like the game, no one near gonna always be as sweet as what you guys think it's gonna be. So I want y'all to always put y'all work first, man. Put put master in your craft first. Because before anything and before when it's all said and done, you only got your hands. You only got your hands. And you want those to be vital and important to your clients so your clients can respect that. So as you guys can see, my boy was struggling. Tough. Golly, boy. And we just turned him into a god. Y'all know what time it is. Hashtag TBT. It's the beam team. 
Lock in, focus up. Let's get this money and may God bless.